Hey, welcome back. So we need to collect some data from our uh, checkout form, right? So because I had closed uh, this window, I need to add a few items to the cart again. So back to shopping and click add. Let me add maybe three items here. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of items here and I'll click checkout and we come to this page. So of course, uh, we need to collect data from here. And so if I click pay now, it doesn't take me to where I want. So let me go back for a second and let's see what we can do about this. So let's go to our views and check out .php, that one right there. So here we do have a form. But unfortunately, we have a few problems here because we have another form here and some of the content is some of our inputs are in one form, some are in another form, and then this is completely outside the form. And then we have our button completely outside the form as well. So we need to fix this. So the first thing we need to do is encapsulate everything inside our form. So let me move my form up to this part. This is a Shopify information. So I think it's just fitting to put the form above this. So let me look at where the div ends and the div ends right about there. So first thing I'll do is put my buttons inside that div, encapsulate them like that and push them in a little bit so let's see how that changes our form well not so much which is good and then now what we need to do is the pay button should be a submit button of type submit and then let's remove the link here so that uh, we can actually use this as a submission form so refresh now, if I try to click pay, nothing happens because, of course, it's outside the form. So let's move everything within the form. So that and that. So I'll move the lower part of the form to that part. Let me move it one step away. And then I will move the top one to the top right here. Mm -hmm. like so very good so let's see if we've broken anything yeah so the styling is now all messed up because it seems uh, the way the original template was created it was set up to use the forms as part of the CSS but no matter we will fix that what we need to do though is remove the inner form here because that will mess things up so remove that form mm -hmm. and also we don't need two of these divs anymore uh no i think actually they're okay we can leave them like that so let me do this let me do that just it doesn't really matter the structure here so i think let's leave them at that but the styling is all wonky now. So what do we do here? Now, because I, I don't want to spend time going into how exactly the, the CSS works, because we can go to the CSS page and check what the styling is pertaining to this part, but that can take hours. So instead, let's put our own styling on these items. So for example, these uh, we know that uh, this thing is using Bootstrap, so we can simply add some classes here, easy peasy. So I just add a class here and I'll add one for form control. It's called form hyphen control like that. Let's see what that does. Okay, so my forms are looking much better now. So let me just add some space between them. I will add some break tags. You can do that or you can create your own class here that separates or adds a bit of a margin around them. <clears throat> so let's try uh, the break tag route and see if that actually works. 
okay so you can do it this way uh, that's okay if the space is too much for you here no problem just remove the brick tags and add a style to each of these or you can create a class at the top here just add a class and then add the margin that you actually need to display your content but for this purpose because there's not so many items here i will leave it at that okay so let's do the same thing and create a class for the rest of these babies here so which other ones need this so this phone and mobile phone where are we right here phone mobile phone paste yes come back here refresh yeah looking great only we need some brick tags over here as well let me add one of after the select as well same as here okay so refresh we have some gap here but not with these babies here so i will double the brake tags on the select right there refresh okay much much better so you can add form control to these as well if you prefer that because uh, let me copy this for a second and put it there so we can see if it actually creates a difference so you can see now there's a difference with this other one okay or you can leave them with that if you want that's entirely up to you now if you do add form control you may need to remove one of these break tags because it creates too much space so it'll be like something like this okay but i kind of like the gray there so i'll leave those just to create a difference between the drop down lists and the text boxes okay so pretty good now everything works fine now let me try to click my submit button and we can see that it's trying to submit that's why it's saying please fill out this field okay so we are uh, in the right direction yes only thing is we need to capture the uh, form data here so that we know exactly what we have so let's go to the controller and where are we ajax no not the ajax checkout but the checkout.php controller mm -hmm. so all this is good up to somewhere here yeah right before we go to the oh and by the way if there's nothing uh in the what's this wait a minute wait a minute if there's nothing in rows this is going to throw an error so i think we should put an if statement here just remember that if rows if is array so we have to make sure it's an array before we try to sort that array like that okay so that sorts the problem out mm -hmm. all righty then yep that does it so let's come back here now i want to capture my uh, form data so i'm going to say if so i'll check my post variable so i'm going to say if post uh, because that post variable is always set right so all i can do is count if there's something in the post there so i can just use this count uh, if i say count post is greater than zero then there's something in the post there so what i can say is a uh, print readable a uh, post data like so but wait a minute wait a minute want to use the show function it's dead so show post exactly so let's refresh and we see now uh, it's not showing anything but let's try and fill out some gibberish post 
Ooh, there we go. There we go. Post. Ah, so there we go. We have uh, some stuff there, but as you can see, there's not enough compared to what's here. Here I have like one, two, three items, which is uh, not good. So at least we have message. We have these two, but we don't have any of these input fields. Now that is an easy fix because all we have to do is give each one of these a name attribute. That's why they are not showing up there. So say phone, so that one is phone. This one is mobile phone. Let's try, uh... oh, wait a minute. Phone, mobile phone. Hmm, seems kind of redundant, but it's up to you which fields you want to leave, which ones you don't. So I think maybe mobile phone is more required. So let me move the required to mobile phone. And then here maybe we can say home phone, something like that. If you really need this, but in my opinion, I think you can just leave mobile phone. Uh, we really don't need two phone numbers, but it's up to you. So I'll say mobile phone, and this one will be home phone, something like this. Okay, so we have name, country, state. Okay, good. But here we have address. Okay, so address one and address two and then here we have postal underscore code and uh, that's it so let's do a refresh mm -hmm. so let's dive in now country state berg and some kind of comment yeah Hey. Okay, so now we have uh, the information that we need. Look at that. So address one, postal code, state. So as you can see, the country and state are sending us the IDs of those things and not actually the names. So before saving, we will have to get the actual names of these things because we don't want to save IDs because they may change over time because if let's say somebody purchases something today two years down the line we may change what states are available and countries are available and we still want to know what exactly number two meant at that time so yeah and also we need to be able to um, to have some data in the uh, what's this in the session yes so for each rows where is rows coming from anyway okay so the rows has the products themselves so a goodie there we need to show rows as well so back and refresh yes resend the data and there we go so now you see uh, we have the uh, customer details and then we have the items that are that are supposed to be uh, bought here and their quantities and their amounts okay only thing is we need the customer's name as well so let me come back here and let's do this now we have session user I hope that's the one if I'm not mistaken, or is it? Refresh, resend. Ooh, where is that? Wrong data. So what I want to do is just echo out the session. Where is that? All 
All right, so we do have a, oh, so some of these uh, items are from a different um, project completely. So the only thing we have to look at is user ID here. Yeah. Okay, so what I would do is I'll flush out the session and then come back here. So let me do, um, where is this? How do I actually flush out this session? Hmm. Something I have not done in a while. So let's do it for each. I want to clean it out. So for each session, key and value, right? Then all I'm just going to say is unset session key. That way I, I flush out everything from the session there we go boom yeah and as a result uh, I will be logged out I think so for each unset and now if I try to refresh no I'm not logged out at all but I can see that there's nothing in there now I can go back to echoing out the empty session. Refresh. Okay, so the session is now empty. Mm -hmm. So which seems uh, on the checkout, we are not uh, asking for user login yet. Okay, but at least now we are getting the information that we wanted. So let's see how we can use that information and save it into our database. Mm -hmm.